Okay, so I think that uh, I want to get this session started as quickly as possible. So the topic that I have that I'm dealing with is data marketing skills for remote work. I want to say thank you to Africa, the organizers of Africa Digital Skills Conference for the opportunity. Uh, I hope that we will be able to share a few thoughts together, especially in this season where digital skills are even more important than ever. So I'm treating the topic digital marketing skills for remote work. I have a four part agenda. So uh, the first is introductory. The second part will go into digital marketing just a broad overview of digital marketing. Then uh, third, I'll go into digital marketing skills for remote work. That's my uh, the main issues that I need to deal with. And then next steps, where do we go from here? So let's get right into it. So first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm called affectionately AB Sam or Samuel Abwaje. So I'm a founder, an entrepreneur. I manage two organizations, Wizzy Academy and Lumans Training Solutions. So Wizzy Academy is into uh, training the next generation of entrepreneurs, especially digital entrepreneurs. And Lumans Training Solutions, uh, we are into professional development training, uh, leadership management, strategic management. We also offer uh, MBA programs with uh, UK organizations and the like. So I have expertise in uh, training in various ways, whether it's content development or it's uh, facilitating or instructional design. And uh, my, my subject areas, my core areas are digital marketing, startup development, soft skills, project management, and strategic management. So I'm also a validated regional trainer on British Council's program called Connecting Classrooms. So it's a program where we, we, we teach teachers how they can inculcate core skills into their, into their teaching. So core skills like critical thinking, problem solving, creativity and imagination. So I do I do that as well. And then, of course, I'm into digital marketing. Uh, I work as a digital marketing strategist or consultant, if you may. So I say, essentially, I develop and implement digital marketing solutions or campaigns. Now, there is only one ground rule to our session today. I want us to keep it real. So uh, you can get in touch. If, if you want, you can also chat, you can do all that as the discussion goes on. Let's make it as real as possible, as if it's the real class. Okay, so we begin with what digital marketing is. And uh, without the benefit of, of, of you, the participant, talking back to me, I'll just go ahead and give you what, in my definition, digital marketing is. So digital marketing essentially encompasses all marketing efforts that use any electronic device or the internet. So any form of marketing that uses internet or electronic device can be termed as digital marketing. And that alone should tell you how broad and wide digital marketing is. Digital marketing is re referred to as internet marketing, web marketing, online marketing, e-marketing, and the like. I mean, so when you see all this, uh, it's the same thing. The term digital marketing really is, is, is quite a recent idea. So maybe in the last five years or so, but it was more of internet marketing, online marketing. Okay. So that's essentially the part one. We, 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 are, we are done with that, I mean, just the intro. So now I want us to get into digital marketing proper. We'll begin with a research that uh, Hootsuite. Hootsuite is a social media company and they provide solutions for social media scheduling, posting, posting and the like. So 
they have this research they call we are social and every if every quarter they they bring uh, they they conduct research and they have really really useful information that i feel that will provide some insight insight so that's the first thing that i want us to do so under the digital marketing intro i want us to look at the digital trends digital marketing domains seo and then keyword research that is if there is time the idea of seo and keyword research is is to offer you opportunity to experience digital marketing in practice so if there is time we would but even if there is no time uh we have enough content to, to 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 keep you busy all right so digital trends when we talk about digital uh from my study what i what what i realized from what uh sweet does is that digital can be broken in three ways first is internet usage then uh there is the mobile usage as well okay so we'll go into it and then social media so this is a broad view of data around the world in 2020 so this this data uh it's it's a few months back but the current data is is, is even more updated so if as on the time that i put this together the total population in the world 7.75 billion and urbanization as in out of all people in the world 55 percent are urbanized maybe they live in urban areas in cities metropolitan 55 percent of the world so the three areas that hootsuite focuses on it's mobile the internet and then social media so these are the three digital platforms that we, we will be getting into so unique mobile users that's 5.19 million penetration is 67 percent internet users that's uh over 4.5 billion internet users and the penetration it means the rate at which people have been able to get onto the internet so in the whole world roughly almost 60 percent of the world population are online and almost population are on social media that's 49 percent all right so let's look at what, what we just looked at the growth over a period with the total population between january 2020 and january 2019 within one year there was 1.1 percent increase in in the general population mobile phone usage there, there was 2.4 percent and then internet users seven percent and social media 9.2 percent so you can see how how the rate at which social media is growing as compared to even uh, internet adoption all right so let, let's now take each one of them let's take social media let's take mobile usage and let's take the internet so these trends will help you to appreciate where we are going with with digital so i think i've at this point i've made this point again so i'll skip it and move on to uh, overview of global internet usage internet users okay 4.54 uh, as compared to internet users as a percentage of total population that's the 59 percent so i think i've also made this point maybe what's of interest is the last uh, figure here on the last item here average amount of time per day spent using the internet by in each internet user it means on average every person spends six hours 43 minutes online every day now when you come to mobile internet users people average daily time spent using the internet or mobile devices so in terms of using internet or mobile devices we spend as much as three hours 22 minutes every day on average so some spend more some spend less okay so now i'm trying to narrow down the whole uh, global statistics 
I'm narrowing it down to Africa. So this is the, the, the Africa context. 1.3 billion people are in Africa and the urbanization is 43%. So out of this 1.32 billion, 1.08 billion have mobile phones and that's 81%. And internet usage is at uh, 34%. So it tells you that we have more than a double of people using mobile phones than they are using internet. And uh, social media is 16%. So again, more than a double of people who use, so less than. So if 34% of African population use the internet and 16% of this same population use social media. So you get an idea. All right, so the whole point, what's the whole point of these statistics? I mean, we are in a digital world. So when you see figures like this, what you have to ask yourself is what's in it for me? I mean, how do you, how do you play your role? How do you take advantage of this internet uh, uh, landscape and, and, and the social media and uh, mobile phone usage and adoption? You don't need to be techy. You don't need to, to have programming skills. But there's still something that you can do, or there is there is a place for you in this space, and and that's the work that I have for today. Okay, so uh, okay, so just getting back to the agenda, that was a little on the digital trends. Now I'll move on to talk about digital marketing domains. So the the trends I showed you, it was just to give you a picture of where we are going as a people so that you see that the rate at which digital is going there is no slowing down and when you even look at the figures this time especially in a call the, the the how the rates have gone so it tells you that this is really the future the job of the future is digital we want to delve into digital marketing and digital marketing is something that is not too technical and difficult for anyone to learn. So uh, you can participate in the, the digital revolution without becoming a programmer per se or a technical person. All right, so we'll look at digital marketing domains. Uh, that's quite extensive, but I'll try to make it as brief as possible so that I can touch on the other areas. So we start. What do we mean by digital marketing domains? Digital marketing is a discipline on its own. And within digital marketing, there are sub disciplines or there are sub categories. It's, it's called various names and I'll mention them. So these sub disciplines, we have SEO, SEM, SMM, and all that. I mean, these are not really technical stuff. I'll try and explain them. SEO means search engine optimization. SEM, search engine marketing. SMM means social media marketing. Then we have content marketing, marketing analytics, marketing automation, email marketing, video marketing, and the like. So all these are sub-disciplines within the digital marketing domain. So to become what you could call a full stack digital marketer takes a lot. It doesn't take three months or even six months. You know. So what we do with the trainings that we organize usually is that we train people to become what we call T-shaped marketers. So what does that mean? What it means is that we help people understand all the domains at somewhat a deeper level, but not deep as in master level, but at least deep enough that, <clears throat> excuse me, they'll be able to handle and appreciate just about anything within the digital marketing domain. Then we do a deep dive where, so the T is the broad digital marketing, all the domains we try to train in all these areas. Then you pick one or two sub 
domains. Then you specialize. So that's when you become a specialist or an expert in SEO, expert in social media marketing so or content marketing. And it's important because you can't, social media marketing can't be done in isolation. When it is synced with the other disciplines, that is when you see the true effect of digital marketing or the social media marketing. So I'll go on and just talk briefly about these disciplines and you may have your interest, but I encourage you that uh, you take a course in digital marketing and then you dive deep in one of them after the course. All right, so let's get in. I'll start with search engine optimization or what we call SEO. So what is SEO? The definition here is the process of optimizing your website to rank higher in search engine results pages, thereby increasing the amount of organic or free traffic to your website that your website receives. So when you go online, let's say you are looking for something. Uh, for example, I want to buy a pillow. Then I type in soft pillows in Accra, soft pillows in Ghana, soft soothing pillows, neck pillows. It could be anything. You type it in. You will see several results that appear and others that, are, that you are even unable to, to, to access because there are so many. Now the question is that why would one result come first? And when you click the results that come, the page that it comes, let's say Google, you do a Google search. That page is what we call search engine results page, SEPs. That's the name. So the whole idea of SEO is ensuring that if you are a pillow, you are into pillows, and someone comes online to Google search engine, uh, sorry, to Google neck pillows or soothing pillows or medical pillows or sleeping pillows or whatever your website or your web property will be on the first page of google so the process of trying to optimize your website all the things that you do to your website off page and on page so that your website will return on the first page of google it's what we call search engine optimization. And on the SEPs, we have usually the traditional uh, results page. We have 10 results. You, so you see 10 websites that appear. So if generally, if, if you are at the first position, you are likely to receive more visitors to your website than someone who is at the second position. Of, that is all things being equal. But other factors can come in such that someone may be at the third or fourth position, yet they receive more visitors to their website than someone who is at the first position. So if we were to go deep into search engine optimization, you would appreciate uh, what I'm trying to say. But at this stage, just understand that SEO simply is ranking your website or doing something so that your website, all the things that you do, the technical, the non-technical stuff that you do so that your when someone searches a certain keyword that is related to your website your website will come up so those words so those search phrases they are called keywords keywords okay so there are a number of ways to approach seo in order to generate traffic or qualify traffic to your website so we have on page seo off page seo and technical SEO. I'll just explain that in a bit. When we say on page, so when you have a website, there are certain things that you are supposed to do on your website. For example, the title. If you are selling uh, neck pillows, for example, the, the descriptions you have, the articles you have on your website, the images that you have, they should be keyword optimized. It is this that you do that will let Google, the Google algorithm, realize that, okay, this search query, let me go and pull data from this website. So the on-page, there are so many on-page factors. 
there is your title tag, meta description. I mean, it's not anything technical, just that these are fancy technical words, you know. Those things that you do to improve your chances of ranking first on, on, uh, on the search results. Then there's an off page. Off page is something that you do not on your website, but online or sometimes even offline, but usually online, but it leads people to your website. For example, let's say if you are featured on CNN, there's an article, I'm just using that as, a, as an example. If you are featured on CNN or you write an article on CNN, then in the article or in the story, a link is put in the article and so, when someone clicks that link, it comes to your website. Now, because CNN is a very authoritative website, Google, because the Google algorithm is not a human being, so it uses all these factors to rank websites. The algorithm will begin to think that if CNN is linking to your website, then you have something worthy to be shown. So then they will be looking at all these factors and then they'll be showing you in the search results. So the linking that you get, that process is called link building. So you do, you build links. It's one of the, the major things that you do for off-page SEO. It is SEO that you do not on your website, but on other people's website or blogs or wherever. But there's a link that when they click, it comes to your website. Then there is a technical SEO. So these are things like the, your, your page speed, image compression, some other things that you do so that your site will load faster. It is uh, mobile friendly. So usually with SEO, these are the three things that you need to do. So as I'm saying now, if you want to delve into SEO, this is where you begin from. And I will share some resources to help you. Let's move on to content marketing. Content marketing essentially is to ensure that content, and content comes in so many forms. Content comes in text, so blog posts, stories, articles, all that text. Then video is also content. Images, as in infographics, they are content. Podcasts, that is voice. All these are forms of content. You know, so the whole idea of pushing content out there so that people get to know what you do and really the purpose of promoting your content assets, these blogs, these podcasts, these videos, the purpose is to generate brand awareness. And when people get to know, ultimately it drives traffic to your website. Then when the traffic comes, what we call lead generation. Some people get more interested in what you do. They may sign up for your offers, for your free trials, and then you begin to build a relationship with them. Over time, they become customers. So that's the concept behind content marketing. You may not see results with content marketing in the immediate, but long-term, content marketing is so useful. Content marketing is also very much linked to SEO. Because the more you produce content, the more your SEO performance gets better. Now, okay, so I've mentioned this infographics, all of that. Social media. I have to say that social media is not the same as digital marketing, and get this straight. Social media is just one of the channels. There are several of them, and social media is just one out of the many. So if, if, if you, are, you are a social media marketer, you are not necessarily a digital marketer, you know. But social media is so huge that it, 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 it forms it, or it comes across as a sub-channel on its own. And what do we use social media to do? To drive or increase brand awareness, drive traffic, generate leads for your business. Or sometimes you can sell directly on social media. And we know the social media platforms or social media marketing platforms, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Pinterest, you know, and the rest. Uh, if we had more time, then I would have gone into some metrics for you to see. So we have a, a course that we do solely on social media marketing where you get into 
each of these platforms and know how to use it to market your business or market yourself or get jobs to do. Okay, so there's also paid search advertising. So uh, this is on Google search as in the search engine results page. When you type anything, let's say you can now, you can type, you can try it, mobile phones to buy. When you type anything, you get the, the, the results. But sometimes on the very top, you may get some results. You will see written the sponsored. These are adverts by advertisers. So the process, and it's also quite a technical thing that you, you, you can do, and it's a specialty on its own. So the process of doing that is called is paid search advertising, you know, doing it on search platforms. The mode of doing we, we refer to it as ppc pay per click so what it means is that anytime someone searches something and maybe your advert appears once they click it may lead them to your website or wherever you want them to go anytime they click google you pay google anytime you click google makes money so you pay to be put on um uh, search engine results pages. So that's digital, uh, sorry, paid search advertising. Okay, so, all right, I've mentioned this. Email marketing too is another one. And in email marketing, the whole idea is that trying to engage customers, developing relationship with potential customers. And email marketing is still the number one channel for generating business, in spite of the huge influence of social media and all the other platforms, email marketing is still very huge. So you can get people to subscribe or you can get people on your email list through blog, by subscribing to your blog or your newsletter, email to, so you send them mails, they can download something, welcome emails so all these are ways of interacting with your customers or potential customers okay display advertising display advertising this is also uh, another marketing channel so when you are online there are websites you will see some images some adverts there so as you see here, add here, add here. What you, all these ones, we call them display advertising. They may be banner, uh, tower, there are different names for them. Usually image and text, and this is videos as well. So it's, it's also another specialty on its own. So you can see where we are going. Digital marketing is so broad, you know, that it just doesn't take three months or six months to, to say that, You've mastered every discipline in it. Okay, web analytics. This is what web analytics, all the, your efforts online, the web analytics or digital analytics helps you to measure how you are doing. And there are three legs to digital analytics, in my opinion. There's the data, the analytics, and visualization. So the data, is the raw information you get. And when you analyze, you process that information to make meaning, that's the analytics part. You know, that's where there's a lot of calculation involved and it can get technical. Then the visualization, it's the presentation of the information in a way that can be easily digested. So usually in web analytics, this is what you look at. The most popular platform for web analytics is Google Analytics. So, all right, let me talk about online PR. So if you are a student or you are a professional or you have a background in editing, in journalism, in broadcast media or anything like that, with an understanding of digital marketing, you can work as an online PR. And what do they do? If you are an online PR, you can reach out to people through social media or reporters can reach out to you whichever way. 
you know so most of your work is through social media or through online you engage uh companies sorry engaging online reviews of your company so what that means is that you have a company or you have an organization how do you project your organization or you may have an organization that has bad review it is the job of the online pr to ensure that the website has a lot more positive things to all a lot more positive feedback so that's a role the role of online pr again engaging people when people comment on blogs on websites on social media trying to ensure that you are you are essentially doing pr for an organization or for an agency online the marketing automation so quite close to email marketing email marketing is actually a form of marketing automation but marketing automation again goes beyond email marketing so the whole process of using software and configuring them to automate your marketing operations that's what we refer to as marketing automation so for example you are able to set a sequence that when someone comes to your website they click this uh, something should pop up when they sign up you are not there maybe you're on vacation two weeks but they will be receiving a mail from you they'll be receiving information from you you set chat bots bots to interact with them all these are marketing automation techniques so that that's that's just maybe where i'll end it with regards to the platforms but that's not all but before i move on let me talk about what marketers actually do digital marketers are in charge of driving brand awareness so four things or three things brand awareness lead generation and conversions so if you're a digital marketer and you don't know how to drive brand awareness make a product known how to to drive lead leads to a website and how to convert those leads into customers then really you are just a digital marketer in name you know so but all these are done through the channels that we mentioned some are free some are paid you know and these channels the company may own them others too they may have to use other people's platform to do that so we have your paid channel own channel and then uh what's the third one there's there's a third one and end channel or or you can say paid media and media and then uh so it own media so media that you own or media that you pay for or media that you earn because you get free publicity all right so if you have a digital marketing skills you can become a freelancer entrepreneur employee and later on when you grow and you are so good at what you do and you have a lot of uh, experience under your belt you can grow to become a consultant so that's about the digital marketing domains because of time i'm not sure i'll be able to do the seo and keyword research so i'll skip that so that we can tackle uh, our main thing digital marketing skills for remote work so i'll skip the seo so the whole idea was that out of all these digital marketing channels i was going to take one and then we go through we do what we call keyword research uh, how keywords are used some terms to know in keyword research and then uh, keyword research by keyword by search intent you know whether it's navigational transactional informational commercial or local queries but maybe uh when you hook up we can i can help with this there is also search demand curve uh, that i was going to explain but we'll skip all that and then we'll move straight to digital marketing skills for remote work so let me do this quickly all right let's get started so if you want to go into remote work oh okay before we do that let me just say that 
the whole concept of digital marketing is to help, I've mentioned, brand awareness, lead generation, and then conversions. That's your duty. But you can't wake up just now and say that you're going to digital marketing. So you need to develop the skills. So we are seeing digital marketing skills for remote work. Now, the world too is going remote. I don't even need to say it. And there is a, re a recent report by IFC that mentions Ghana as one of the top African countries in need of digital skills. So it tells you how relevant that this day, if you have digital marketing skills, you won't struggle to work remotely, whether as a freelancer or a full timer. You know, so I'll I'll also show you some some links if you want to access remote work. But you don't live here and start accessing remote work, and that's the mistake many people do. There are steps. There is a process you need to go through, and when you skip the step. even to find remote work. Okay, so first, it starts with getting trained and not just getting trained, getting certified as well. You have to train, you have to learn. It's, it's a skill, digital marketing is a discipline. It's like saying that, okay, I want to go into accounting and now you start looking for accounting job. Or I want to go into just about anything I want to go into, maybe I want to become uh, an engineer or a lawyer. Of course, these are established professionals and still digital marketing is an evolving profession, but you need to learn, you need to train and not just training. If you get certified, it proves to anyone that you just don't know, but you have the certification to back what you've done or what you say you know, you know. So if you want to train, I can point you to a few resources. There is Google Digital Garage. There is Sam Rush, S-E-M-R-U-S-H. -E so just Google Sam Rush Academy, or you can Google Google Digital Garage. So it's a, you, you get a complete, digital marketing courses to undertake and then you take certification. These ones, the certifications are free. Some, they are paid. Now, I must point out that in as much as I recommend these online resources, we've had students who've come to us after paying a lot online, only to realize that they still need some handholding. So, these are useful resources, but sometimes you finish everything, but practically you may not be able to execute the guitar marketing tasks. So that is when, if you get someone to coach you, if you get someone to give you feedback in what you are doing, it really helps. But at all costs, get a training and get certified. The second thing is that you should develop or gain practical skills. It's not enough to get certificated. You have to get, so as I said, I, I, I had students who are taking Google Data. It's a full program, it's 40 hours. And when you finish, you write exam. Yet when they came, they do it. In reality, this is how it applies, you know. So this is where you get the industry knowledge, the, on the job training. It's just so important and I can't emphasize it enough. So what I would even say is that you take internship, okay? You take internship, you do jobs, and the internship helps you in a number of ways. One, you, you are able to develop a portfolio of work so that you can show to people that this is the work that I've done. I was able to drive this uh, number of people to this website. You have something to show. Now, whoever you intend for, the, 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 your, your mentor or the person you, you intend for can recommend you to people. So you get referrals. And three, you get on-the-job experience. You get access to industry tools. 
You get to use tools. You get to know how the job is actually done on the ground. You know, so uh, there is a platform called Arcadium. It's it's for internship, but again, you get a training and then the internship, and uh, it can be quite difficult to get into Arcadium. But with our support, with our help, with what we do at Wizzy Academy, we help with that. We guide people through the process. Now, after you've trained and been certified and you have some skills, you've taken some internship, maybe three months, this is when you begin to put yourself out there. So I'm not suggesting that you go study something for three hours, five hours and say that I'm a digital marketer. You just announce to anyone. I see so many people like that online and people come to our training. They may have taken a lot of certifications and they still know next to nothing. So after you have completed your, your, your internship, so you have some practical skills, that's when I advise that you put yourself out there. So first thing that you have to do in putting yourself out, out there, you have to update your CV to reflect your skills, to reflect what you know now and your certifications. Two, update your relevant social media profiles. So now it has to include your skills. It has to include your certificates, links to your work online, maybe your portfolio, your past work. You do that. Then thirdly, you get into the appropriate or the right communities. Facebook community for digital marketers or for social media. There are so many of them, Slack channels, uh, LinkedIn groups. There are so many. So find the one that fits your, your area of specialty, then you go into it. Or you can assess the group and see how relevant it is. Usually within the network, you get recommendations. You get people, okay, I need someone to do this or someone needs this, can someone help? You know, so it's so important to be where the professionals are. And lastly, on put yourself out there, you should publish. You should be able to demonstrate that you can do digital marketing. So if it's social media that you have expertise in, we should see some updates, some, some, you should be publishing something. If it is content marketing, it's writing. You should be publishing something in one way or the other. And usually when you do that, you need to look at your, your CV or your profile or anything like that. Your work will speak volume, so you start publishing. So when you have done this for, let's say, another two months, one month, two months, then you can go hunting for remote work. So there's remote.io, remote.co. All these are platforms that offer remote work. There is Upwork, which is now very difficult to get into. You know, upwork.com, Upwork. It's, it's a freelance platform. But if you are looking for more permanent jobs, you go to a website called FlexJobs, FlexJobs.com. So, but FlexJobs.com, you have to pay. So there's a monthly subscription of about $15 or $14 or so. But usually what we do is that we have a subscription and then we help our students, all the relevant jobs, we, as soon as they hit, we send, we, we send to them without any extra cost whatsoever. So uh, you go hunting so many ways. There is Fiverr, there is all of that. But again, you may need some guidance in, in getting your ideal remote work. All right, I think that because uh, the session started a bit late, my time is gone into about uh, five minutes. So let me round up in just five minutes, okay. Or maybe in two minutes, I think I can finish. So just to recap, uh, after the intro, I quickly went through the digital marketing. Uh, we went to digital trends, digital marketing domains. We skipped SEO and keyword research. And now we just completed uh, remote work, you know. And finally, uh, and remote work is the process. There were four things that I talked about, how you have to you have to get trained, get certified. That is one. Secondly, get practical skills through internship. Thirdly, you put yourself out there by updating your social media 
profiles, having the CV that reflects your need skills, publishing content in one form or the other. And, and sometimes you could just be using your phone to do a video on something that you have expertise in and, and sharing on YouTube and then using your digital marketing knowledge to push it. You know. So, and then also the, the fourth one and that putting yourself out there is getting into relevant professional groups or communities. So I think, and I've, I've thrown out some links out there for uh, internship. You can look at Arcadium for, in, for uh, the first one is uh, getting certified, SCM Rush, Hood suit, but who suit? It's it's paid. Uh, there is half spot. Uh, yes, and 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 the rest. Then, if you want to find out finding job, permanent freelance. There's flex work. There is app work. Remote.co, remote.io, and the rest. So the question is, of course, we didn't want now. We couldn't uh, capture everything, but let me just go through the next steps and then that'll be it for today. So if, if, if you want to take this step further, you can enroll in our upcoming training. We run a lot of training. So you can, you can just WhatsApp this number, 0244722599, introduce yourself. And then let's see the training that will help you. You can connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Wizzy Academy. And then our website is wizyacademy.org. On our website, you can join uh, our community. So which is wizyacademy.org, and you can sign up for our newsletter through our community. So I think that uh, I'll end it here.